Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince. I want you to like, share, subscribe to this channel. Please leave comments, feedbacks, man. I need you to hit that like button. I like. I need you to hit the dislike button. Whatever you feel in your heart to do, do it, man. I'm not one of those people who are caught up in the likes because at the end of the day, man, I only look to hear likes and dislikes from my wife and my son. So at the end of the day, man, it doesn't bother me none. Um, so please just make sure that you give me feedback about the material and what's going on in my in, in all my videos. Like, tell me how you feel about it. You know, do you like it? Do you dislike it? Just let me know what's going on. So today's topic, man, going to be about are you willing to die for what you believe in? For me, I finally made up in my mind that I'm willing to die and go the distance for Jesus Christ. I finally made up in my mind. On yesterday, man, I got baptized. Um, I've been a believer for a while now. I would say since I've been 11th grade, but I won't say that I've been consistently living this life the right way. But I would say for the last four to five years, I have been consistently um, faithful and doing what I had to do, have to do as a believer. So the question I have for you is, are you willing to die for what you believe in? The reason why I know personally that I'm willing to die for it, because one day the thought went through my mind about my sacrifice that I made as a soldier. When I was serving in the United States Army, because I had personal things that I wanted, um, I remember in Afghanistan, man, I had a uh, what they call a dream boy, which is crazy demonic, so I wouldn't do it now. But at the time, I had this picture of a CBR 1000. I think it was 07, 08. And all I talked about my whole deployment was I wanted this motorcycle. And whatever it took to get that motorcycle, I was willing to do it. I was willing to die to get it. And there was nothing that anyone can say to me or stop me from doing what it took to get that. And I was willing to go great lengths to have this motorcycle. Why? Because it was something that I personally wanted. Well, I apply that same thing to my life as a believer, man. There's something that I want. And that something that I want is I want to spend my eternity with Jesus Christ. Why? Because of his grace, because of his mercy, because I'm dying for my sins, because of him being the only way, the truth, and the light, and knowing that no man can come to the Father except through him. I realize that I have to be willing to die. So I'm going to give you a scripture that kind of helps support what I'm talking about. And this scripture would be Matthew 16, starting at verse 24 down to 28. And then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses life for me will find it. What good would it be for a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is, coming, is, is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. Then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some of you standing here will not taste death because death before seeing the son of man coming in his kingdom so again when i read that stuff and i think about the fact you know of uh, what would it profit for me to gain the world yet lose my soul or understanding that you know in verse 27 talks about he will reward each person according to what he has done so this to me that 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 just that sentence alone stands out to me that no matter who i am even if i don't believe in christ I'm going to be rewarded for what I've done. If I'm in Christ, I'm going to be rewarded for what I've done. So for me, I would rather be rewarded for being in Christ, denying myself, picking up my cross and following him, than to have been a person who probably denied themselves to a certain degree, but then they walked away. They stopped. They, they you know what I'm saying? They got weary and well doing. Or... That person who become, you know, who stands and say, you know what, Jesus is not real and I'm not believing in that and 
man, that's false. And, you know, now they're into Nimrod, Tammuz, or, you know, any of these Greek gods and, you know, foreign gods and all these, you know, demons, which is what Paul called them. You know, they, you know, they're going after those things. I, I'd rather choose Christ and follow him. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, man, that's what a soldier does, man. A soldier give up their life, man. A soldier don't just assess themselves and think about themselves, but they think about those who are to their left and to their right. You know what I'm saying? They they look they look forward towards the, the mission, and Paul calls it pressing towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what a soldier truly does, man. So the question again is, are you willing to die? And my answer is, yes, I'm willing to die. Why am I willing to die? Because I already died in Christ. I already died in Christ. So it's not me that lives, it's him that lives through me. So I've already died. So when it comes to this world and, you know, cars, money, clothes, and all these different things, they're great things. I enjoy them. But what constantly pushes me to die is I remember life without it, man. I didn't grow up with money. My parents had money. You know, I grew up in a nice home. But when it came down to me as the individual, man, I, I didn't have no money. So when it come to these earthly things, man, I'm willing to give them up because they don't hold that much value and weight in my life no more. I've had a lot. I've had a little. And like Paul said, and no matter what state I'm in, I learned to be content because at the end of the day, I realized that things doesn't, they don't define me. They don't make me who I am. I was already created to be who I am. God made me to be a husband and a father. He made me to be a provider, protect the priest. And when I learned that one thing, when I learned those three things, that God created me to be a provider, protect the priest, man, it changed my whole life. It changed my life in such a way to where I became willing to die to myself or who I was because everything that I thought I was, I realized through the scriptures that I'm nothing. I'm nothing. The Bible says that a man who think of himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceive himself. So there's a lot of people out there deceiving themselves, thinking they're somebody because, oh, they became a doctor, a lawyer. They have, you know, bachelor's, master's, doctrinal degrees and all these things. Man, all these things, are van they vanity. That's, that's what Solomon said. They, they're vanity. All these things I've done in this life is vanity because why? At the end of the day, man, you living for somebody else to own your stuff. You go out there and you spend all your hard-earned time accumulating money, clothes, house, and all these things, not realizing that you're dying, man. So are you willing to die for Christ or are you going to die for yourself? Because either way it go, you're going to die, you're going to leave this world. And that's the conclusion that I came to because in Afghanistan, man, I remember being so close to death to where, man, I can stand beside a gentleman who saw nothing but death his whole life. And in his eyes, I could see death. I remember seeing Afghanis look like that, man. I remember watching 22 people a day be brought in at the flight line or not a day, but, you know, those days where they had 22 people or they had people we had to go salute at that flight line and were bringing them in. I remember seeing that stuff, man. I remember seeing that. And what that allowed me to see is, man, that at the end of the day, man, we all so close to death that why are you sitting there fighting, trying to live, brother? You should be fighting to die so that you can be like that seed. In order for a seed to grow, it has to die. It has to die. It has to die. So don't spend your life wasting your time investing into temporary things, man. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? Your soul is worth more than what you understand and know. You're giving up your soul for alcohol, for drugs, for women, or for men. You're giving it up for a car, for some fresh Nikes. You giving it up for that? Ah, man, you got to be willing to die, man. That's not saying that there's anything wrong with having nice things, but at what cost? Your soul, your soul is more valuable. You know why your, I know your soul is valuable? Because Jesus died for that. Jesus said he died so that you may have life and life more abundantly. You're not living in 
life more abundantly if you living in sickness. Because there are people with money that's sick. Sick in the way they think. Sick in the way that they, you know, sick as far as their body. You know, sick in all different type of ways. Sickness just doesn't have to do with a, a, phys a physical illness. It can be a mental illness. And most of y'all vets, y'all are suffering from things. You trying to figure out why you're suffering. A lot of it can be due to your bad decision. Most people don't want to talk about that. Yeah, Jesus died for my sins, but he didn't die for my bad decisions. Though I have to deal with the consequences of my actions. The Bible says you reap what you sow. You sow some things, man, you're going to reap that. God can help you through your bad decision, but a lot of you vets, a lot of you out there who... You know, indulging alcohol, talking about you got anxiety and all these different stuff. Your problem is, man, you sin sick. You sin sick. You're dying because of sin. You're dying because you won't give up your life. You're willing to give it up for the army, for a cause that really you weren't the true cause. It was selfish. Even the people who sent us over there to fight that fight and do the things that we did, man, they were selfish people. It was all about money, politics. And we were willing to give up our life for all of that stuff. And you mean to tell me that now you have you can have Christ and you don't want him? You ludicrous. Or are you you telling me that you had Christ and you walked away from him? You ludicrous. Which means you mentally ill, you sick. You can't do that. Like me, I'm not caught up in the what's going on in this world, man. Because I know I'm here temporarily. My faith and my trust and my all is in Christ, man. I'm on my cross, man. I'm denying myself because I'm willing to die. I'm willing to die. I'm willing to give it all up. You know why? Because I realized, man, my whole life, I used to try to figure out why am I here? Why was I suffering? Why did I go through that? Some of it, it was due to my bad decisions. It's not because of the hurt that I had going on in my life as a child, the, you know, the church hurt. That was part of it, but that wasn't all of it. A lot of it was I made a lot of bad decisions. As long as I can remember as a child, I made a lot of bad decisions. And I was suffering from that. So me trying to be mad at God, I was mad at God because of me. That's insanity. I made bad decisions. And those bad decisions made me feel depressed. They, they made me feel inadequate, like I was incapable of doing good things in life because I made so many bad decisions. Well, I learned the key to that was make good ones. My pastor always say that. He was like, man, you made a lot of bad decisions. Well, start today and make a good one. You want to get rid of that anxiety? You want to get rid of that depression? Then make good decisions because I learned that depression has nothing to do with what other people have done to you. It have all to do with what you have done to you. Maybe you sat there and slept with a lot of people. Of course you're going to feel depressed for that because your body wasn't made for that. Maybe you're depressed because you smoke marijuana. I know people think, oh man, marijuana calms you down. Yeah, I, I used to do it. Matter of fact, quick story, I sold drugs just so I can keep an ounce of weed on me every day. So I was, I was a weed smoker too. But you know what that thing did to me? It made me feel depressed. I popped pills. I did a number of drugs, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going into the list of it because I don't want to glorify that stuff, but I've done it. And you know what it did? It made me feel depressed. Of course it's going to make you feel depressed because your bad decision is going to make you feel depressed. It's going to have you feeling paranoid, schizophrenic. I know because I did it. But those are things you got to be willing to die to. I can't support every veteran cause. I can't be a part of it. You know why? Because, man, I'm not in this world. I'm not, I'm not of this world. I'm in it. But I'm not of it. You know, at first, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was down for the 22 veterans a day. I feel sorry for them. But it's hard feel, for me to feel sorry for people who checked out. You know why? Because I, I dealt with the same things. But I just couldn't end my life and, and, and just give up. And that's what they did. I feel sorry for the families who lost family members due to the struggle. But at the same time, I don't sympathize with that because they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do it. But I pray for the family members. It's a hard tragedy. It's a tragic situation. 
that shouldn't have never happened. But that was their decision making. That was their decision making. And the scripture that helps me out with this is 2 Timothy 2 and 4. It says, no one serving as a soldier get involved in civilian and fear. He wants to please his commanding officer. For me, I want to please my commanding officer. My commanding officer is Jesus Christ, man. He's the one that's leading my life. He's the one that leads me. He's the one that promised that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He's the one that, you know, said that he came that I might have life and life more abundantly. He's my hope. He's my all. He's my everything. He became my everything. He wasn't always my everything, but he became that. He's the one that says as far as the east from the west, so all my sins before. Yeah, I've done a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. Yeah, I made a lot of bad decisions, man. Yeah, I'm unworthy of them. There's nothing I've done to deserve them. The Bible said all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. I'm one of those people, man. If any of you watching this know my story, you remember who I was and what I've done in life. But I'm not ashamed of that stuff, man. Romans 1 16, I'm unashamed of the gospel. It's not about what I've done in life. It's about the gospel, man. That's what it's all about for me, man. You know, and again, I was about to say earlier, I remember um, growing up, I used to always try to figure out why I suffered and why I went through everything, man. But then one day I was reading about Moses. I was reading about Joseph. And I, I was reading about people who suffered their whole lives. And I remember a story about Joseph, man, you know what I'm saying? Here it is, his family and everybody in the, around him, you know, going through famine. And here it is, he's in a position to where he's second in command of Pharaoh. And he had an opportunity to get back at those who hurt him. He had an opportunity to, to do them as they did them. They sold him in slavery. They gave him up. But yet, instead of choosing vengeance, Joseph chose mercy. He chose mercy. He chose mercy. And he forgave his family. Matter of fact, he forgave them in such a way he never brought up any accusations against them. He never told the father about what they had done to him. And even when they addressed him and they apologized and repented, he said, brothers, it wasn't y'all who did this to me. God allowed it to be. He allowed it to be just because this is where he wanted me to be. And that's the understanding that I have is everything I went through in life, I didn't go through it in vain. I didn't go through the witchcraft, all these other things that I went through. I went through those things because God wanted me to be adamant in my belief. How could I suffer as a Christ for righteousness sake if I don't know what it's like to suffer for things I've done, for things that I didn't do? Those things taught me how to suffer now, to where now I'm willing to die. You know why? Because I remember being teased as a kid. I'm not mad at people for doing that. But those things gave me a tougher skin to where now as a believer, people can say all oh, manner of things about me. They can say, oh, man, brother, you crazy. Oh, brother, man, you Uncle Tom or, you know, whatever, you know, most black people call black folks because of, um, you know, my choice to say that, you know what I'm saying, racism is sin. You know what I'm saying? Like, all those things don't bother me because, brother, I've been suffering my whole life. I, I went through my whole life. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about myself anymore to the point that where I'm willing to defend myself. I don't need to defend myself because this battle that I'm in, this battle that I'm fighting, it's not mine, it's the Lord's. That's what I understand and know now is his battle. When I died to myself, when I denied myself, pick up my cross and started following him, I gave up my life. And now I'm living for him. So again, I'm willing to die. And I just don't say that. I mean that. You can ask my son, you can ask my wife. I talk about this with them. That we ain't just saying we believers, man. No, we, we live in this. We going to do this. Do we make the right decisions all the time? No. We make mistakes, man. We human beings. Sometimes we just don't get it right. But at the end of the day, man, I'm willing to die. You know why? Because I want to be in glory. I want to go with the Father, man. So I'm willing to give up everything, man. 
I'm not, I'm not going to let the devil, you know, bait me with things, man. He, I can't let him do that, man. Because in the Bible, it talks about us being victorious and how God defeated Satan and da 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 So I know I'm walking in victory because Satan already got defeated. That's why we call him Slowfoot. He lost the battle. He lost the war. All power on heaven and earth was given to Jesus Christ. He lost. So why would I have that information knowing that? Choose to live out there with Satan and his angels who lost. Because that's what you're doing when you choose not to follow Christ. That's what you do when you say, oh, I'm a believer, but then I become a Freemason. I become, you know what I'm saying, a, um, a fraternity, sorority member. You, 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 you eating at the same table, you eating at the, you you're supposed to be eating at God's table, but you eating at the table with devils. That's what the Bible was talking about. You can't serve two master. You can't do it. So who's your master? You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's that's why that's why most people don't go to church. The fact of the matter is they don't want to deny themselves. They're not willing to die. Well, I pray that this talk help you, man. I pray that it helps you veteran. I need you to understand that, man. You can keep going to these counseling sessions. You can keep taking that medication. You can keep advocating for new medical marijuana. You can do heroin, crack cocaine, for matter high. You, you can do all this stuff you want, but you're never going to come to a place of peace. If anything, you're going to kill yourself and you're going to die for nothing. You're going to die in vain. You're going to leave this world dying. And you ain't going to receive a purple heart in life. You aren't going to get a crown. Because you die without Christ, man. You got to die with him. You, you got to die in Christ. You cannot die outside of him. If you die outside of him, you're going to hell. I can't sugarcoat it with you. I can't tell you that there's another way. I can't tell you that it's hope and Gandhi, Buddha. Confucius. I can't tell you that, you know what I'm saying, Allah is going to save you. I can't tell you that. I'll be lying to you. Allah had no sons. Issa, Isa, you know what I'm saying, as they call him, Jesus, he was just a prophet to them. He wasn't the son of God because they don't believe God could have a son. So I'm not, so I can't tell you that. I can't tell you spirituality. In actuality, spirituality is witchcraft. It's just another name for it. So I can't tell you that's going to work. You know why? Because it won't. If all power was given to Jesus Christ and Jesus said in his word that I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man can come to the Father except through me, that tells me that there's only one way. There's not two. There's not three. There's only one way. So make Christ your way. Confess with your mind and believe in your heart, man. I, I don't have to take you through no prayer, no. You get on your knees and you pray to God and ask him to help you. You get on your knees and ask him in your heart. You do that. You don't need nobody to do that for you. There is no mediator. Jesus is your mediator for, between you and God. That's why I can't tell you being a Catholic gonna work. Because the priest, man, he made himself Christ, but he's not. So I know you may have grown up a Catholic and all this stuff. I, I get that. But that's not going to let you in. Maybe you were born a Jew. But if you didn't become a Jew through Christ, then you're not a Jew. So let Christ in. But the main question I ask again, are you willing to die? And my answer is yes, I am. I've already died. Bet talk out.